Hello everybody, Brian Eslick here of a Mercedes E320. It has a code uh, P0400, which is an EGR insufficient flow code. So I'm gonna walk you through my process of uh, checking the EGR valve out. So on this car, the EGR valve is a little buried just behind the, uh, on the right side of the in, uh, engine bay, underneath the uh, air snorkel. So it's down here. So the first thing I did was I uh, took the vacuum line off the vacuum switch using my vacuum gauge here and I pumped it and I don't know if you can see this or not on the side but you can see the pintle move so the gauge is and it's holding it's holding pressure so so it's indicating that the uh, the valve itself is capable of working um, so now as I'm inspecting I found the vacuum switch to it is right here, just just to the right uh, to the right of it. Or if you're looking at it towards the back of the car, it's on the right side of it. Uh, the vacuum switch is here, and um, I found the vacuum line going to the uh, valve is broken. And it goes from 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 actually it goes from underneath to the EGR valve, and then I and it has this little valve little hose that connects it from the uh, Vacuum switch like that loops around to the EGR valve. So what I found was the uh, the vacuum supply line to it was broken. So that would cause it not to work, but that's not the end of our diagnostic there, right there. Because what happens a lot of times on these is if the valve doesn't work for a long time, it fills the port up with carbon. So even if I got this working again, it would. Uh, it may not uh, flow through because of it being plugged up with carbon. So what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to fix the vacuum line and I'm going to put my gauge on this side of the EGR valve and I'm going to apply power and ground to the, the switch, make sure I got a signal so I'm going to confirm that the electrical connector works, uh, the vacuum switch works. After that I'll plug it back in and I'll apply power and ground again to it again and see if it makes the engine stall, stumble, or hesitate. So now I got the, the vacuum line that supplies the, uh, the vacuum to the switch fixed. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fuel injection connector that I had in my toolbox and unplug the, the eject the connector and plug this in. This just happens to fit right on. And I'm going to use my power probe and I'll power this up and I'll check the signal going to it. Actually, I'll just do it this way. I'll plug it in, start the car up. I'll have to reassemble my uh, air cleaner here so the car will run. And I'll apply power and ground and see if the engine stumbles. Okay, so now I got my, um, my, my car running. I got the vacuum gauge hooked back up. I got my power probe here. And I got this hooked up to the negative side, which is terminal 2 on it. Now I'm going to touch the terminal here and apply power to it and, and listen for the engine, engine RPM change. Okay, so I got the engine running, and I'm gonna, and I got my almost my power probe here. I got it uh, rigged up where the negative is on the terminal two and terminal one is the power. I'm gonna supply power to it. I'm gonna listen for the engine to stumble and just hesitate a little bit. On Mercedes, it doesn't do a whole lot, but um, some like on GM cars, they all love stall the engine. But on Mercedes, it kind of just makes them stumble a little bit. Let's see if we can duplicate that. Here we go. I'm gonna apply power right now. Yes, as you can see, it's making the car run rough in the bed. So that means our EGR port is open and flowing. That means our EGR valve is working. That means the vacuum supply to the switch is there, and the vacuum switch is working all together. So the only other thing we can really do to test it is actually um, hook our vacuum line up to the um, to the port where the where it goes into the EGR valve and drive it and make sure it gets a signal from the PCM to turn the vacuum switch on. So what we're going to do now, last final test, is we're going to unhook, plug our electrical connector back in. We're going to uh, unplug the EGR valve here, vacuum port, and plug in our, our, our vacuum gauge tester like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this up on the windshield and uh, reattach our air boot here so we can drive the car. And we're gonna back it out of the drive here and drive it, you know, just for like uh, 
Uh, these, what they do is they apply vacuum to these under certain engine load conditions. So at idle, there's not going to be any vacuum. And that's uh, steady cruise or off throttle, like when you're 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 on the throttle and all of a sudden you let go of the throttle, it's not going to have vacuum uh, uh, applied to the EGR valve. But when you take off, like off of a launch or something like that, that's a quite a bit of engine load, and it'll, it'll apply a little bit of uh, EGR to uh, reduce the NOx. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to get this where it's run drivable again and we're going to drive it now with the vacuum gate hooked up like so and we're going to clear the codes before we do this because sometimes when they're when there's engine codes they won't run the EGR valve they won't run certain things so we'll clear the codes and, and, and get this drivable and drive it and make sure that we get a vacuum signal so what, what that's telling me is the computer itself is turning the vacuum switch on so we so now we know that the vacuum switch works the vacuum supply which was originally broken on this car was, uh, is repaired the EGR valve works and the ports are open and clear which is now the last step is to confirm that it is getting a signal from the PCM